going on, Creative Beast enthusiasts? And welcome back to another episode of Creative Beast Spotlights. In this episode, we're gonna break down everything y'all need to know about the Diablo Ceratops, where it lived, how it looked, what it ate, and how it fit into its ecosystem. Let's get started. Translating to devil horned face, I know this one is one of your favorites, Chris. Diabloceratops was first discovered in 2002 in Utah's Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument and the fossils were unearthed at the Wall Wheat Formation which dates back roughly 80 million years during the late Cretaceous period. The partial skull and lower jaw piece wasn't officially named until 2010 by paleontologist James Kirkland and his team. The full name, Diabloceratops etoni, is a tribute to its devilish horns and to Jeffrey Eaton, a paleontologist who contributed significantly to the study of the region. What really makes the Diabloceratops unique out of all the Ceratopsians are its two long upward curving horns sticking out from the back of its frill and most of its relatives had different shaped or smaller frills. But it's for certain that these wicked horns definitely gave it its demonic nickname. Diabloceratops was a four-legged herbivore that stood about six and a half feet tall. That's an inch taller than I am. And I'm pretty big. And measured 18 to 20 feet long. And it likely weighed around 3,000 pounds, about the equivalent of a modern day bison. The Diabloceratops had this short nose horn. And like most Ceratopsians, it had this large bony frill that stuck out from the back of his skull, which these distinctive devilish horns grew out from. And these horns might've played a role in intimidation, species recognition, or possibly mating displays to get a bunch of cute little baby dinos. And like other Ceratopsians, it had a sharp hooked beak for slicing through tough plant matter or the flesh and bone of any aggressors if it needed another weapon. A smaller relative of this devilish Ceratopsian, Protoceratops, was found locked in combat with a Velociraptor, with its beak grasping the predator's forelimb. With most Ceratopsians being much larger than Protoceratops, you can only imagine how devastating a bite from them would have been. Diabloceratops was in fact a herbivore. Its diet likely consisted of ferns and other prehistoric plants that were common in late Cretaceous period. And it wasn't munching on grass, like a bison, because grass didn't exist yet. Can you imagine not having any grass to walk on, to roll in, to play in? Grass? But instead of grass, it grazed on low-lying vegetation. Using its sharp beak, right here, to snip stems and leaves, and using its strong muscular jaws to grind that plant matter down to swallow it. But while Diabloceratops was primarily an herbivore, it is a very likely possibility that it occasionally fed on meat. Many modern day herbivores will eat meat when the opportunity arises, like deer catching and eating birds. Yes, that actually happens. We even have fossil evidence of hadrosaurs with crabs in their gut. And with the sharp raptorial beak that Ceratopsians possessed, this would only make tearing flesh easier for Diabloceratops when the opportunity arose. It's certainly food for thought and food for their stomachs. Diabloceratops lived in what is now southern Utah, which 80 million years ago was part of the western shore of the Western Interior Seaway. And this is what split North America into two land masses, Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. The Diabloceratops shared its environment with other dinosaurs, such as hydrosaurs, theropods, and crocodilian-like reptiles. The landscape was semi-tropic, humid, and littered with rivers, floodplains, and swamps. 
Other herbivores, such as Acrestavus and Adalolophus, roamed ancient Utah, and apex predators like the Lithranax were always lurking in the underbrush, on the lookout to snap up a meal. As a mid-sized herbivore, Diabloceratops had to stay alert, even with all of its weapons at hand. Was the Diabloceratops a loner, or did it hang out in herds? While we don't have direct evidence of this animal being a herding species, most Ceratopsians are believed to be social species. And what's great about herding animals is it provides protection. For example, the Ceratopsian Pachyrhinosaurus has been found in fossil beds with literally thousands of individuals. This proves that herding was extremely likely for its other relatives, like fellow Centrosaurine Diabloceratops. And as you mentioned, Chris, sticking in numbers would deter predators from attacking, especially when younger Diabloceratops would be easy snacks. And while the Diabloceratops may not be as famous or as widely known as the Triceratops, it's still incredibly important to paleontology. It's one of the earliest known Centrosaurines, a subgroup of Ceratopsians that includes species such as the Centrosaurus and the Styracosaurus here. And studying the Diabloceratops here really helped us understand how Ceratopsians evolved diversified, and even adapted over time. It gives us a snapshot of Ceratopsian evolution right at a pivotal moment in time when new Ceratopsians with unique ornamentation were rapidly evolving across the Cretaceous. They were an incredibly successful and diverse group of dinosaurs that we only keep learning more about as time marches on. And there you have it. The Diabloceratops is a wickedly cool dinosaur with a devilish set of horns, a beak built for chomping, and a presence that would be known throughout North America from the late Cretaceous period. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more dino deep dives like this one. Got a favorite prehistoric beast? Let us know in the comments below, and we might just cover it in a future video. From the prehistoric to the fantastic, Great Beast Studio!